record this. If a pair of the nth, I forgot. If pair of the nth boy or nth, yeah. Then what can we say about the rest? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. One side. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So these are all boys. If that is that's what you're asking or saying, these are all boys. This we know. But what can we say with relation to the condition that we have? Like, does this condition still hold for the other people? No. Right. For the once you pair off, pair off means the n minus one with girl is also now not available. Right. That we need to keep in mind. Right. That's what pairing off means. Then, then now we can no more say that every boy has three friends. Can we? We cannot say right. So we have lost that, we have lost that thing, right? Because it could happen that, and it will happen that this girl had friends with some, let's say this n at minus one boy. Now this n minus one at guy loses one of the friends, right? So then, they, yeah. And then That's why we cannot use induction in the direct way. Then, the remaining people don't have um, exactly three friends. Obviously, most of them will still have but not all of them, okay? But there is something interesting that we can say about the rest. And that is, see, if you look at one person, then he had three friends, right? Now, everybody has at least two friends, okay? So that we can say. Everyone has at least two friends. We're able to say this, but this is not enough. It's not enough for us to prove. Yeah. So yeah, that's where it gets a little tricky to say it directly. But then, so, so this is the new thing, which I don't expect one to think of directly. If you would look at this case, if you look at some, if you take some K, if you take some K boys, okay, pick any K boys, or let's say, let's pick two boys. Pick any two boys. Let's say one and three, okay. What is the total number of friends that they have? Can you say at least? So what is the minimum number of friends that they have now in total? Yes. Uh, um, my wife four? No, think. Wife four. It could be three. It could be two, right? It could be two, right? It could happen that they had like this case and then they had this and then they had this as the friend. You agree, right? So earlier, earlier you would have said three, but now you can only say two. Yes. So total number of friends. So if you look at, so see, everybody had, everybody has three friends at most, right? Not more than that. 
Yeah. So the boys who are remaining, the boys who are remaining, they have two friends or three friends at most, right? Earlier they had three friends. So what is the minimum number of total neighbors that two boys can have? So it need not be six, it need not be four because they can have the same neighbors. They could have the same friends. Like if one and two have the same friend, one and three, if one and three have the same friend one, then one doesn't get counted twice, right? The girl one doesn't count, get counted twice. In the same way, if this first boy and, first, and third girl have the same sex friend that is a second female, then again, this two only gets counted once, right? So life is tough for them, one and three, right? They don't have many choices in that sense. And let's say that the third, and let's say the third choice they have is N minus one, which is now not available, right? Which is now not available. And so in total, they only have two friends in total. So like the total they have to manage with, with two friends, okay? But if you pick any two boys, then they have at least two friends in total. Even after deleting the nth uh, boy and with her, one, of her part, one of his partners, at least two friends. This you can try to think and convince yourself. You take some two minutes and try to think that for K boys also, this will hold. So the situation is that we have deleted the nth boy with the partner and now for the rest, this situation will hold. For any subset of boys, the total number of friends they have will be more than that subset. I mean, it should be, otherwise uh, we, otherwise there's no possibility of matching, right? That's the general principle. But think about why this is true. Like it should be true, but we have to prove it. So just think, I'll just come in a minute.
Okay, so do you see it? Let's see. Uh, but no, okay, so tell me for three. Tell me the reasoning for three because then you will understand if it's actually correct, right? Yeah. So just run your reasoning for three and see if it's correct and say it. If, if that is a, yeah, so we just assume in that situation. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Connect them to the third card. Okay, cool. Second and the third, you're connecting to the third curl. Okay. No, 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 no. So let's keep for three. Okay. So here you have showed that you need at least three people, at least three, at least three girls, right? For these three boys. Okay. And you, you have shown that you cannot manage with two. But so let me try to, you know, try to prove you wrong, which you, you, you are correct, but I'm just trying, okay? So what if the situation was that the second boy, the other partner of the second boy was N minus one, which is no more available. And the third girl, had the friends with the second boy. So then what happens? Because then this is gone. That edge is gone. So what is wrong with this? Or is nothing wrong? Let's see. Hmm. Should have at least two friends. Okay. So. Sorry, say that again. Mm -hmm. So then are you wrong or can you make it correct still? Let's see. So you are still, you're correct, but only have to complete the reasoning. Mm-hmm. There, so. No, uh, no, but you can't change this, right? Because this situation, this, so this situation can arise. Uh, okay, so maybe you say that again, maybe I don't understand. Yes, yes. So in that situation, three boys would have three friends. These first three. But what is wrong with this situation? This situation can also arise. Like we want to show that it cannot arise, right? 
yeah you see we are trying to show that no matter how the friendships are you pick any three boys which is without loss of generality 1 2 and 3 they will have at least three friends in total no matter how you see and that's what we we are trying to establish a general truth that's the whole point of graph theory the theory right yeah so no but you are right i mean you are just incomplete a little bit here the point is that see one has two friends two also has two friends three also has two friends is that possible that all three have only two friends like why does one and two have two friends why not three because you can say that these two had friends with n minus 1 which is now not available right but you but then 3 cannot be friends with n minus 1 again ah that's the thing because there is a constraint on the girl side also right ah so then this must have another partner it could be 3 4 anything but just three dots here doesn't this thing is not important and then you get it okay so this is not so you have not yet proved but now it's your is your job but this is not easy we just did a case work okay it is not trivial we did we just did a case work now it is your job to prove this for k and the idea is if so as we have kind of seen we have to use some sort of a double count because you are using the constraint on that side also so you have to count the neighbors from this side and neighbors from that side okay and you have to do so do to do this for homework this is your homework okay or just and now just take a minute and review this then i will go forward we are not yet done okay let's take a minute and review everything then we'll go forward i also just think this k situation yeah so basically you have to use the constraints on both the sides to prove this and it kind of you can feel it right it's kind of yeah but yeah. so it's like you take k boys and how many friends they can have and you count it and those girls how many friends uh, they can have and so like you need more girls and so you need at least k and so on so on you have to do okay so we have shown something we have shown this that you pick any k boys they have at least k friends okay and you see this situation is present in c the condition that was given to us when we started so this problem has so many sub problems that's the point this condition that we started with this condition is not preserved under induction right you agree when we went to smaller case this condition was lost but there is this other condition which is preserved under induction this condition was ob is obviously true in our case and is also true when we go down okay so this condition is preserved under induction so then now it tells us how to proceed like if this is the hint that is given then you should know how to proceed that means what we should do now is we should say that if if in a Yeah, so let me write this basically let me first say it then the what you should say is that this condition is enough for a perfect matching to exist this condition itself right because this is a condition that is preserved you can you see right this is the condition that is preserved so you will say that this is this is the condition that i will say will imply that a matching perfect matching exists that is everybody can be matched now you see this condition is more general right it's a it's a more it's a more harder condition it's a more general condition it subsumes this condition about n boys and girls has exactly three sides this is a stronger claim but in induction proving a stronger claim is easier sometimes because it is also preserved when you go down okay so 
So this is what we will prove that if n, or let me just say it in our next page, if n boys and girls such that every boy, so now we don't have to say about the girls. If every boy has, so if, if every subset of k boys has at least k friends means on the other side in total this is important in total so some boy can have only one friend that is possible but if in total any k boys you pick they have total number of friends is at least k at least k it could be more than k okay and if other like any of those you know k choose uh, n choose k subset subset you pick or rather like this is for any k actually so it's two to the power n any subset you pick okay it will have at least that many friends okay so that is this is a very good condition right? it's a condition that runs over all subsets so it's like a second order kind of condition if every if over every subset of k boys has at least k friends in total then there is a perfect matching now in some sense we have already proved this you can just use the same proof we did because you can assume this for n and when you go down this condition will be preserved okay but let's do the proof let us do the proof and this theorem is a very popular theorem it's called hall's matching theorem okay it's it's uh, theoretically very important but also you will see it will be there in some olympiad books also like there is a book olympiad treasures or something like that right uh, treasury or something i don't remember the name in there that was that's where it is given in olympiad flavor which is it's given like this basically but this is a this is present in if you look at msc books also it's there but some general version and so on this is a very very deep result I means it starts with something like this very simple but goes this is called hall's theorem so even in current day research this papers this theorem is present as a reference okay this is like a very century old theorem so yeah this is a and this is not difficult to prove okay basically you see so but you understand the condition right any k boys will have that situation will have at least k friends okay so first of all i want you to so let's look at this condition let's call the star okay and this uh, if you so I, maybe i can suggest you that you, you can find problems make applications of this theorem in that book olympiad treasure just have a look i don't remember the exact chapter just just type and search hall's theorem in that book you will get something or just hall or something you've typed olympiad treasures Let's try the first few questions. Maybe you will get a good uh, by T two hundred square thing. Okay. Yeah, but but let me say the other side of it first. And basically, what we did was an application, <laughs> right? So, anyways, let's see. So you understand this condition, right? So let's just make a small this thing, small graph. So basically. It could so basically not too many boys should not have like this situation, like this graph will not have a perfect matching. Right? Because these three boys have only these two friends. So it's, a, it's a, this theorem is the, the other side of this theorem is very obvious, right? Like it's very obvious that if this condition is not matched, then there is no perfect matching. If this, ah, that's the obvious thing. So that's a very obvious condition. So we are looking at a very deep phenomena that there's very obvious, a very obvious condition. Okay. And obvious, I should say an obvious necessary condition. It's necessary, right? It means that when a perfect matching exists, then that condition must be satisfied. That is very obvious. So it's an it's necessary for a perfect matching to exist. Obvious necessary condition. 
plus true for all subsets right so we take a very obvious condition and if it is true for all subsets then it is implying that it's also sufficient so you see this right so this is obvious in the sense that it's obvious as a necessary condition like if there is a perfect matching then obviously if i pick three boys it should have at least three friends if i pick four boys there should be at least four friends in total otherwise it's impossible to make a matching so it's a very obvious necessary condition but now we are saying that this condition should hold for every every subset okay so then this becomes sufficient also okay this is the thing now in graph theory we have seen also earlier that many obvious condition obvious necessary conditions became sufficient see that's how you discover theorems right you assume some condition and get some conditions you assume some a uh, thing which you want like a perfect matching or or existence of a connectivity and you assume that when you get some conditions those are necessary conditions and then they become sufficient if you take enough of them but, but then the other way is that you take that necessary condition and you impose it very drastically basically you impose it on all subsets then it becomes sufficient this is the type of theorem this is and there are many theorems of this type this is one example hall's theorem there is another theorem of this type which is called tutt's theorem which i have also seen being applied but in harder form like you will see some imo questions if you see some imo graph theory handout this will be there but uh, yeah this is a, this is hard to prove this we will not go into but this is other other theorem of this type which is about perfect matching in arbitrary graph this is about only bipartite graph so yeah now let's come to the let's come to the main thing yeah let's let's come to the proof so the proof is just basically induction so you assume that it happens for n minus 1 and you want to prove it for n right so let me not do the proof let me just tell you do it by induction So again, you assume this for n guys and n girls. It holds. You take the nth guy, you match with one partner. Then now you're in an n minus one situation. You show that again, the same thing holds. Okay. So yeah, and it will not be difficult because let's see that you have this n guy, and let's say that he has one of the friends. I mean, I can assume it's the last one, right? Because it doesn't. There's no last or first. You can just assume this. When now, when you pair this off, when you pair this off. now you take any k people here let's say 3 now obviously they should have at least three friends because if they had two friends then if they have two friends then what uh, then but uh, uh in, no uh, one minute let me think no 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 so yeah no so it's not done like this So see, we have to assume that it holds for the. So we have to prove it by induction, right? So we are. So let me let's let's write it clearly. Otherwise, we get confused. Let's not get confused. Because I mean, I you know induction, but this problem may be a little tricky to do. So let's do it. so assume assume the result for n minus 1 that is if you have n minus 1 boys and n minus 1 girls and this situation this condition matches then there is a perfect matching now we want to check for n if i take the nth if i take a if i take a nth guy and i pair it away with one girl then we and then we say that we remove this then the question is does the condition hold for the rest n minus 1 ah uh, you're saying that yeah i think you are kind of so you're saying that if there are some boys who would have paired with this let's say anith girl yeah 
So let's say that there are some boys who are paired with this. Mm. Okay, so let's say that the situation is like this. So then now we have, um, no, so we have to take like, yeah, no, um, one minute, yeah. So if, if there are these two boys, yeah, so one I have to draw like this, something. But then you see, if you go to the nth case, then also the condition is violated. See, it's but the condition holds for the, the the condition holds for this case when there are n boys and n girls. So if so, if you find, for example, if you find two boys who now have only one partner in the new graph, then if you go to the graph for N, then you will find three boys who have two partners. Okay. But I think, but I'm, I might not be correct. Let's think because uh, this Nth guy may have some other partner. Right, right. Yes. So let us just think about this carefully. Mm. Let's think. One second. Yeah, so then that's what I'm saying that the situation could be like this. So then what do we do in this situation? Those two boys? Right. Yes, then Yeah, if you see, if you don't have this red line, the last one, then the situation is wrong because then these two boys have one partner in the smaller graph, but then these three boys have two partners in the bigger graph, which is a contradiction to what we have assumed. Okay, so that's why we need that at least in the bigger graph, there was no problem. And that could have happened if you place it like this. So then then in the bigger graph, yeah, then in the bigger, no, but then there is still, uh, yeah, but then there is still a problem, right? Then these three people have only two partners. So then, no, but then again, I can maybe make it like this. Hmm, one minute, so, no, 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 sorry, yeah. Yeah, so that is okay, have at least K partners. Yeah, 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 it's at least K partners. Yeah. So then what do we do? So then in the so then in the bigger graph there is no problem because we have three people having three partners.
So in the smaller graph, you have two people who have only one partner and that is a problem. But these two people in the bigger graph have two partners. So there is no problem. And even if we take three people, then also there is no problem. Well, um, yeah, actually we don't need this. No, hold on. So, yeah, we don't even need that. Yeah. We have three people who have three partners. So that again, there is no problem. Hmm. Yeah. So then maybe you have to make some cases. So you have to make a case like this. See if, um, yeah, basically the problem that is happening is that we are removing from this nth person an arbitrary partner. Okay, and that is not very good. So you have to do a case work like this. So, um, yeah. So if if there if there are some R boys, okay, with R plus one friends at least r plus one friends in total then you should then you should pick a boy from that thing yes uh, right because you see uh, you see the point right because if you have these r people okay and if they in total have obviously there are other edges but you see, if there are R people and they have R plus one partners, right? Then when you remove, in that case, when you remove, let's say one partner like this, then the remaining R minus one people will have at least R partners. Okay. Uh, Mm. Yeah, this is confusing because because now there could still be a problem, right? There could be other people. How do you show that for everybody else it is okay? Um, one minute. <clears throat> Yeah, so it looks good for this R people, right? This R minus one people have at least R partners, but yeah, but this could clearly be a problem with some other people, right? This Rth people, Rth uh, boy are being removed with the R plus one girl. This could create problem with some other people, just like we just saw. Uh, you could take those and then that and we can create hmm. um, so then what do you do one minute yeah so then 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 basically we have to do something like this right that if if every r boys have at least r plus one partners if every r boys have at least r plus one partners okay for r less than n then we are done this is clear right because when you're removing some boy so in the case of n boys, so there are n boys and girls and every R boys have at least R plus one partners. Then you remove any boy and you remove some girl partner with it. But then everybody else would have at least R partners. Any Every R subset would have R partners now, at least. Because initially they had R plus one. You see, okay, and this will be true for all R. So this case we are done. So this is the easy case when there was ex yeah, there's a lot of choices when there are a lot of friendships and so on. Now the other case is if 
there exists R such that R boys have exactly R partners. So then the situation is kind of isolated. So then we can do like this. So then these are these R people who have R, exactly R partners. Okay, so this is the piece. So yeah, and then, but then, uh, but then you see, you can do the problem for these R. You can get a perfect matching for these R people. So we are using strong induction. Yes, because you see, if there is R people who have exactly R partners, R is less than N, then for any subset, again, the same condition will hold. Like any three people will have at least three partners and so on, right? And all their partners are among these R. So we don't have to go outside. That's a, that's a good thing, right? We don't have to go outside. Okay. But so then you can do the problem for this R. Right? So this allows you to cut off the problem into two pieces. And now you can see that for the remaining N minus R also you can do the problem because the condition will hold for that also. Hopefully, hopefully I might be wrong. Let us see. Let us see. Yeah, I mean, I have to prove it. I'm right, but I have to prove, I think. I think it's not obvious. But you see that, but you see the story for this R people. You get the logic. Yeah, and you can see this is the way we are using induction. The good case, bad case is separate. Now you look at, uh, sorry. Both the conditions meaning. No, no, so no, no, no. So this, this case is done. This case we don't have to do anymore. Right, I mean, if for every R boys and R could be anything less than N, if we find that there are R plus one partners, then there's nothing to do, right? Yeah, and how did I, I didn't see, I didn't get here magically. You saw the whole journey, right? We made a lot of, we got stuck in a lot of places. So we saw that, okay, if there were like, if there were like two boys who have, who have two friends in total, okay. Then there was a third boy, something we saw, right? If there was this tight condition, then we saw that there was a problem. Okay. Then I saw, then I said, okay, let's say that there is a situation which is not tight. Then also we got stuck. Then we came to this last situation. Then I said, okay, let's see this case when there is no tightness anywhere. That is easy to do. Okay, that's how I came here. I don't know the proof because there is another, there are many proofs of this. I mean, I, we have done dozens of proofs of this theorem. Okay, so, but this one is there. Okay, this is different. So, because this is not, actually this is not considered a good proof. This is not a, this is a proof that is given like in Olympiad maths, but in higher maths, there is a better conceptual proofs, but we have to do a different language for that. So this is a situation. Then what's the other situation naturally that if there are R boys, which have exactly R partners, this is the rest of the problem, right? This is the rest of the cases, right? So this is case A. And this is, this is case A complement, right? This is the rest of the cases, right? Where, where there is, even if there is one set of R boy, R could be anything which have exactly R partners, exactly R partners. Okay. Now, now this looks like a tight situation. This is what was creating the problem, but this is for a smaller R. Because it is for a smaller R, you can use induction, right? Ah, because for any K here also, the condition will hold because all their partners have been collected here. There is nothing outside, okay? So it's done for that. But then we have to still do for the remaining N minus R people. 
you have to get them matched so how do we get these people matched that is the question so what do we have to do you see this n minus r is also less than n right so we have to basically check that the condition holds for these n minus r people also what condition the initial condition right you have to check that this initial condition holds for this n minus r people also basically so if you pick any two people here you want to show they have at least two friends where in these only now we are now we cannot go outside remember i mean now we cannot ask for friends from outside because even if there were now they are not available so if you want to do this this is not hard but uh, yeah so you can use contradiction so use contradiction meaning that you assume that let's say that there are 10 boys here who have nine friends if there are 10 boys here who have nine friends okay let's say let's say i give you this then what will this how will this give a contradiction contradiction meaning that you have to then show that in the initial graph also there was a deficit right you have to show that the same thing similar kind of thing was true in the initial graph also that there was some set which had less people but you can similarly append it with this right if these 10 boys have nine friends then the 10 plus r boys will have nine plus r friends even in the original graph 